Hi, welcome to Teaching Moments. I'm Hillary. Today I'm going to do a review for you on a science curriculum that I used with my kids last school year. It's by Apologia and it's called Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics. It is the Young Explorer series. Okay, so a little disclaimer before I start this review. I do not like teaching this subject. Of all the subjects that I teach in homeschool, I don't like teaching chemistry and physics. I don't mind science. I like biology. I like, um, I like studying the earth and the clouds and things like that, but I don't like doing chemistry and physics. I've tried to enjoy it through the years and I just don't. So I've done like the physics using a Becca before, but this was my first year using Apologia. So I'm gonna go ahead and really actually review the Apologia book, but I may refer to how Abeka did theirs once in a while because I know that's a very um, common book out there. Some of you might be familiar with it, and if you're not, then maybe you'll hear some about that as well. Okay, so back onto Apologia's science. The Young Explorer series, as I understand it, is for elementary students. So when I think of elementary students, I think of K through five or K through six. Sixth grade is kind of a middle grade there. Some people count it as middle school. Some people count it as elementary school. I think it depends on your area. Um, but I would have to say being a person who's actually used this curriculum, I would not use it for my kindergartner or first grader or maybe even second grader. I would say third grade and above is good to use this for. But for kindergarten and first grade, I would probably lean more towards science for with a Becca that was um, simpler and just got to some basic contexts and concepts and gave them a basic foundation. As far as third through, we're gonna say sixth grade because I taught two of my kids last year with it. My son was in fourth grade and my daughter was in sixth grade. So they were, on the older end of the spectrum for teaching this book but um, actually I think my son was perfect right it was a perfect blend for him my daughter didn't think that it was like babyish or anything she actually liked that she could understand it better than some of the um, other science books that get more wordy and um, she liked this one so the young explorer series elementary students now I with it you can buy, so this is the textbook part of it. This is the part that either you read to them or they can read it themselves. And I like that it doesn't have any breaks. Like, I mean, it has breaks as far as chapters, but it doesn't have breaks as far as like breaking up the chapters into smaller sections. There's nice places where you could pause, but there's no specific spot where it says you need to stop here. You know, you can just keep going if you want. Um, Abeka had spots where you specifically saw that you would stop there. But they do have breaking points and then it could say, they say, tell what you've learned uh, so far in this study. Um, and then the child will put it in their own words. So um, they do that and then you can continue on if you want to or you can, um, you can stop at that point for the day. It just depends on you. And I love the freedom that Apology I gave with it, Abeka was a little more rigid and strict, although some people might like that with a very set schedule. I liked the freedom of just being able to, to set it how I needed it for my family. Okay, and so also with it, they have a notebook, a journaling notebook. This one is the junior series. They do have just a journaling notebook that's not a junior, and it's the one that's not a junior has more reading in it. There's more questions. Um, this one has, I'll show it to you in just a minute what this one has, but this one has like coloring pages and different puzzles and activities you can do. Also where they take notes when they're, if you're reading to them when they're listening, they can either draw out facts they found interesting or they can write the facts. Um, let's see if I have a, one of those. Oh, here, yeah, here we go. It says, fascinating facts about matter so um, there's a you, you could either write it here and as you can see my student wrote it here or you can draw pictures in the boxes which sometimes my kids take advantage of and so even though my kids are a little older I chose the junior because 
they it's just more fun with it and I didn't want it to be intense and also because with my kids having dyslexia their reading level um, their reading levels vary and I didn't want us to be worrying about reading levels at this point I just wanted them to learn about science I wanted them to learn about um, and not just not worry about the spelling or any anything like that I didn't want that to trip them up also, these two kids that I taught um, also show some ADHD. And so the interaction of the young junior notebook was better for their ADHD student than I felt the other notebook was. So they also have coloring pictures that have verses that go along with it. So while I was reading to my kiddos, they would be coloring a picture. Well, my daughter would, and my son sometimes colored the picture sometimes didn't, but then they would have this to, um, to be able to take some notes on. Let me show you what else is in this journaling notebook. They also have like vocabulary words that they learn. And so this is a piece of paper they got to cut out at the end. And so surface tension, what is surface tension? And then it's uh, like a little flat book. Then underneath it is the definition of surface tension. And so all these are flaps. And so that was kind of fun for them to learn what it is, match it, cut and glue. It was just kind of a fun activity. Um, of course, I showed you the coloring pages. Every beginning of every chapter had a coloring page. Well, actually, had two that they could do. And then there's this one. This one is even a little bit more of a fun one. They cut out this pocket, and then they have these. This was, they were learning about pulleys here. And they, the string is attached, but then they have different items that, the, that they talked about in this chapter. And then you could use this as a pulley system if you wanted to. So that was a fun activity as well. So I really enjoyed the um, activities in the journaling notebook. I highly suggest that you get it. And you can look, there's samples on the websites of the junior one versus the regular one. So you can look and see which one will work for your child and your family. Okay, so another thing that we really liked was the experiments. I actually did many of the experiments. Um, comparing to a Becca, a Becca has experiments that you can do, but I felt like I didn't really do very many experiments with my oldest child who went through a Becca science. Um, but I really wanted to go through it with these two, especially with chemistry and physics. I wanted them to kind of get a foundation of that. So, and just so you know, this is the chemistry and physics for the elementary age students. We do have another physics book I have on my shelf right there. It is a physics book um, for the high school student. It, Apologia actually suggests it for an eighth grader, but um, it can be done in ninth grade. Typically physics is done in ninth grade. I'm going to grab it and show it to you real quick. Just a second. excuse me, not physics, physical science, which is very similar. And man, this book's much heavier than that other one. <laughs> this book is heavier and thicker. Apologia suggests that you use this for eighth grade, but I am using it in ninth grade and they say that's fine. Most, a lot of people use um, the ninth grade science is usually physical science. I have looked, so I graduated one from high school and this is my second one who's going into high school now. And I looked at transcripts from colleges. Um, my husband actually works at a university. So I'm able to look at what um, they are expecting to see on the transcripts. So that has been really a help for me. And then I also looked at some of the other common colleges or universities in this area and found um, transcripts and what they look like. So if you are at that age, you're wondering about high school and stuff and what to teach them, or even in the middle school years, trying to figure it, line it up for the years ahead, go ahead and check out those universities and see what they may be expecting to see. But so that's why I'm doing this for ninth grade instead of eighth grade. But you'll get a review on that um, next year, hopefully. So I just want to let you know that this elementary one, if you didn't do it, that's not the only time you're going to get a science that's kind of with these topics. There's a physical science one as well in the upper years. Okay, back to the elementary one. 
Um, we also bought the experiments and there is a box. Okay, there's a pretty good sized box sitting here that you can't see, but, um, and it's full of the items that you need to do the experiments for these lessons. Now in the textbook, they have a supplies list of the items that you need for the experiments in each lesson. I'm trying to find it for you. <laughs> um, but if you buy the experiments box, then you will get a lot of those items already. There's just a few common household things that they don't put in there, but like they even put paper clips in there and nails and I didn't ever have to find much at all, if anything. Um, oh, here we go. Lesson. See, it's, there's a supply list. And so if you don't get the experiment box, you still get a supply list of what you need for each lesson to do all the experiments. But if you do get this box, it is so handy because the way they set it up is like, for example, this bag here, this is for lesson five. And it tells you all the items that are contained in this bag. And that's what you need to conduct your experiments. I loved doing it this way. It was so much handier. And I got this box for a bargain because I found it off of one of our, um, one of my local um, pages or one of my local co-ops. There was someone was selling this because they were, they were gonna do it and they started, they did a few experiments and then they decided to go a different direction with their kids. And so I picked this up for a very reasonable, probably a third of the price of what they normally sell it. So you can find those kind of deals, but if you can't find these deals, it's still a really good buy, I think, um, to have it all together already. So I highly suggest doing that. Um, let's see, one of my kiddos, which one was it? My son said that he remembered the lessons better with the experiments because he would remember the experience and that would help him to, to remember what was being taught. So that was pretty cool. Um, I think the downside of the experiments is I felt that some of them didn't have as clear ins as instructions as they should have. Um, so that was kind of a bummer. I remember a couple of times going to my husband and being like, do you know what they're talking about here? Like, am I missing something or what's going on? And so he would have to help me interpret how to do that experiment, or at least he knew where, what the result was that I was trying to show the kids. And if we needed to improvise, we would. So I didn't like that about it. It didn't happen a whole lot, but enough to where I was like, eh, they really need to kind of reword some of this. Um, okay, I did also find that you need to do the chapters in order in this book. With Abeka, you can pull out any chapter you want and be like, oh, we'll learn about that and then this and, and just do it in whatever order and it doesn't even matter. But with this Apologia book, you need to do chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, um, in order because it builds. It's just a foundation and it builds upon what you learn, the last one and then the last one. So it goes deeper and deeper to where Abeka just takes subjects and kind of teaches you quite a bit about it, but it doesn't go real deep. The Apologia is different that it takes one subject right here and then we're gonna go deep in it. So they gotta build one thing to go to the next. Okay, so that was a good warning for me. <laughs> I wish I would have known that earlier because then I was, I mixed them around and then the kids are like, what? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Um, my kids liked that there was simpler wording. Some of the books can get kind of wordy. And so they liked the wording in this book and that they were able to listen while coloring. So that was um, very helpful for them. And they liked that there was verses that were tied in with the chapters. Uh, let me check my notes here, make sure I'm telling you everything I wanted to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, oh yes, very important point. I found in this book, okay, and I've also done Apologia's Ocean book before, we, Ocean and Sea Creatures. We really liked that one, that one was pretty fun and it was really interesting. But I didn't learn that, what I'm gonna tell you with that book but I learned it with this one, and I found out that all the Apologia books, at least for the elementary age, I'll find out next year if they have it for the high school too, but um, they have some extra additives, extra like, um, what do you wanna call it? 
it's for a place to go deeper. So they have YouTube videos you can go to. They show you experiments that other people have done. Or um, I even took my Sea Creatures book and started looking up some of that stuff too. And they have videos of the whales or different things that you can help you to learn things deeper. And I think throwing those in once in a while help the kids to keep being interested in what they're learning. So I found it at the front of the book. Before they even start numbering the pages, they talk to you about how to use the book. There's notebook activities, projects, experiments, notebooking journal, course website, and then they give you a website and then there's a little key down here that I covered up <laughs> of, of that basically unlocks you for you to get into all this book, whatever is um, whatever extra stuff they have for this book. I did go on their website just recently and was trying to look into this a little more to see if there was any points I wanted to tell you about. And it looks like they've kind of revamped it since I visited it just last year. Looks like within the last couple of months, they've um, changed it around a little, but I'm sh but it looks like it is somewhere in there that you can get some extra helps, extra digging deeper kind of videos and things like that. So that was a really great find. I enjoyed doing that and so did my kids. Okay, so with my two ADHD kiddos, I really think that this was a win between the experiments and the journaling activities. It helped them to remember and it helped them to help us to put some excitement into our curriculum. Um, I found on the days when I was just more in a rush and I, the weeks I decided not to do experiments, they got really bored. So if you continue to do those activities, it, they're going to keep their interest. Um, also, the board part might have been my fault because, again, I don't like teaching this subject. But I'll have to say, for me, not like teaching this subject, Apologia was a better fit for me than Abeka was. Just, um, just the way that it, it is made, it, was, it worked better for me to keep their interest and keep my interest. <laughs> okay, so there is my review for the Apologia sci um, Science for Chemistry and Physics for Elementary Kids. I hope that this has helped you out to decide what to do or not do with your family. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please hit the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe to get notifications of any time I post a new video. Thank you for watching.